One of the things I love about my garden is how many butterflies we get. And that really has to do with the fact that we have created a butterfly friendly garden, but it wasn't just by accident. There's a lot of things that we've done over the last couple of years to make it the right kind of place that it's going to attract those butterflies, bring in tons of caterpillars so that we can really get the joy out of our garden. So my neighbor and I were talking the other day and it just like, he continues to tell me how many more butterflies that we're getting between like his garden and my garden. And it really has to do with the fact that we've created butterfly friendly gardens. But like what he told, like I'm just taking his word. He always said like he got butterflies, but the amount of butterflies he gets today and the different varieties of butterflies have really, there's been like a big change since I started doing some things differently in our yard. And so that's what I wanna take you through today. I wanna to show you lots of different ideas so that you can get inspired, so that you can have a butterfly friendly garden. I'm gonna show you different plants that attract butterflies, host plants. If you got a shade garden, don't worry. I've got a shade butterfly garden that's doing awesome also. Um, and I'm gonna show you just some things that over time that I've observed that are just kind of like, who knew that would help butterflies? So I'll take you through all of that. So we'll go around, we're gonna see lots of different things and you can get inspired to have your own butterfly friendly garden. So when it comes to plants attracting butterflies, what I'm gonna talk you through between my yard and my neighbor's yard, these are the things that we've actually just observed. So this isn't based off studies. This isn't based off of the fact that like it might be different in someone else's yard. I wanted to give you guys a lot of like, this is what we're seeing. So contrary to whatever advice, here it is, raw, and we can talk through it. So this section gets a ton of butterflies. Um, and this is where I was talking about, like my neighbor, he has throughout the years gotten lots of butterflies. We're starting to see a transition. I'll talk you through why, but this was a great starter. So here we have a mix of exotic plants and some native plants. So we have, um, this is a golden mound. This is usually shaped into a, like a low shrub because it has these like nice, pretty golden leaves. But a lot of people don't know that these actually flower. We got these cute little purple flowers here. And I'll, we see a lot of activity in this section. So what I'll actually see is a lot of skippers, um, which are butterflies. I don't know what actually technically makes one a skipper versus a butterfly, but they like to come on this plant a lot. Um, we will see some things on the plumbago, the blue plumbago. You can actually see, um, I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but there are actually Cassius blue, um, small butterflies flying around. And right there, there is one of our skippers right there on a flower. We've also got, looks like a cloudless sulfur hanging out back here. They're just going all day long. Yeah, there's lots of them back there. So that seems to attract a lot. We will see it on the dune sunflower. His dune sunflowers don't get visited as much as mine do, but one of the favorites when it comes to butterfly gardening is pentas. Butterflies love pentas. They love pentas, especially I, they call it like the old fashioned pentas, which are this red type. My neighbor is pretty sure he said that these are <laughs> the actual old fashioned type. Um, he's not 100% sure, but we see, um, he has observed, not me as much, because I don't get to hang back here as much as he does, is he's observed that he gets a lot more activity off of these red ones than he does the pinks and the, I think he has white ones too somewhere. Um, these don't really see much activity. These don't really see much activity. Um, you would think things like, let me see, like marigolds he's got back there in his vegetable garden, not very much activity. The bougainvillea up there, which is gorgeous. I don't know it's activity, but then again, I don't go that far back in his yard, <laughs> though we do share our yards. He'll come in my yard, I go in his yard. It's good fun. So those are some of the things in his yard that we'll see some pretty good activity. Of course, of course, it wouldn't be Florida butterfly gardening if we weren't talking about firebush. Firebush, hands down, gets the most activity 
out of all the plants in this section. It isn't getting it right now because we just went through a couple weeks where we had really, really cold weather, which these plants will either die back or they kind of go into their winter season. And during that short amount of time, they won't flower. But, and we're zone 10A, just FYI. Um, but most of the year, flowers. And it's just starting to put flowers back on right now. Let's see if I can find some right here. So we're just about to get flowers again. And then this thing will be, you will literally hear it at times. I think there's a video in the past where I was talking about like the bees on it with buzzing so loud. So we get a lot of bee activity, but we get lots of butterflies. And this one attracts a lot of the big butterflies. So this is where I'll see um, zebra long wings, spice swish swallowtails, Gulf fritillaries, you can see they're flying behind me. Monarchs, giant swallowtails, which is our largest butterfly in the United States. So lots and lots of butterfly activity when it comes to firebush. Firebush is like, if you got the space, put it in. One of the other things I want you to notice is there's a lot of different colors in here. And that's a really important thing for butterflies is they don't just like one different color. It's usually like the reds, the yellows, the oranges. They really like these vibrant colors. They do go after things that are even purples and bluish colors and shape of the flower really does matter to them. So that's what you see. I don't know how many butterflies you guys can see right now, but there's like a monarch right there. There's a Gulf fritillary. I can see Cassius blues flying around. Another monarch. Zebra, long wing over here. They're just going crazy. So lots and lots of butterflies. So I'm gonna take you to some other area. But one of the questions I have for you guys is that I'm gonna name some of the plants that I don't think have worked as well for butterfly gardening, though they technically can attract. One of them is coral honeysuckle. I have not seen activity around this. The activity usually has come from Maypop Passion Vine, which is on here, but not really the coral honeysuckle. I haven't seen any activity. Same thing with morning glories. No activity that I've seen. Is that the same for you? Is it different? Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, who knows? One of the plants that I do see regular activity, this is, I feel like another one of those ones, it blooms almost the entire year for us and is a pretty good staple is dune sunflower. Again, this is great for bees if you're considering bees, but that's not why you're here today, it's butterflies. And this is like one of those ones that they just, they like to be around. They like to see it. They like to come. They like to hang out over here. They don't hang out the whole day. They don't even hang out most of the day, but it's a good like foundational plant between this and like firebush that I feel like if you got those two plants in, they're gonna be relatively happy. So some of the plants that you can see around here, I got the native firebush here, which is also similar to my neighbors is coming back out of that cold season. Um, here's the desert rose. I would tell you we get some activity. Again, it's really pretty. We get pollinator activity, but I would not say butterfly activity. One of the ones that they do really like is the Cleodendrum Glory Bower. This one is a really aggressive grower. I don't know if it's, it's not listed as invasive at this time, but it is so aggressive. I would be very careful putting it in, but this type of flower shape, which you can't really see, here we go, I'll show you. This type of flower shape has really, I've seen a lot of different butterflies. They really like this one, especially my larger butterflies, my monarchs and my um, giant swallowtails, which are kind of the two biggest ones that come to our garden. The other one that I would tell you a lot of the large butterflies really, really like is the peacock flower or Pride of Barbados. It's not blooming right now because it is a tropical plant, but it'll be coming back soon. It blooms probably six to nine months of the year. Other plants that attract a lot of butterflies to the garden. Now, one of them, y'all won't want to hear about it, but it is the truth, is Biden's Alba. It's that weed that people love to hate but honestly, they like it. So you can't be mad at me if you don't like it. But this little guy, oh no, where did he go? Oh, here he is. I thought he got pulled on accident. So this, this weed, I know it is everywhere. You will see in parking lots and all sorts of places. But this is the one that if you have this, they really enjoy it. I actually just took two pots of it and threw a bunch of the seeds back here. We'll try to make something happen back here. Another one um, is this is Confederate Jasmine. I think they're also calling it Star Jasmine. This one does get, well, it makes a beautiful arch trellis for us. It actually does get regular activity when it, the flowers are blooming, but the bloom is only part of the season. So you're not gonna get a whole year worth of flowers that are gonna regularly attract the butterflies to it. So I would be like on the fence about like, yeah, that's a good one. One's over here. Now here, in this wildflower garden. And if you wanna see the wildflower garden, like go through all the plants that I put in here, check out, um, I'll put a link in the description down below for the videos. But the thing is, is that Coreopsis, they love the Coreopsis. They love the beach verbena. They love the blanket flower. 
all of these have been like, yes, absolutely. Um, I do know when the sunshine mimosa comes in, when it starts putting out more of its blooms, yeah, they're gonna like it. But it hasn't gotten really warm enough yet for these to all start taking off. I, it's not just because I recently installed it. I know because I have some sunshine mimosa in the other areas and that hasn't bloomed yet. So it's really nice to have a mix, especially down here in Florida. We have a mix of our native wildflowers, ones that bloom at other se different seasons, perennials, and then perennial tropicals. So we got a regular amount of nectar sources for our butterflies. And that allows us to have more butterflies coming through our yard like on a regular basis where if you only have you know flower that's there for a few months they're not going to want to make they're not going to want to stay in your yard that's the reality their food is scarce and they need a regular supply of food to ensure that they keep coming back to your yard so this is a bunch of the native plants yeah definitely check out the video because then you can see all the ones so one of the flowers that is always getting my medium big butterflies is these hibiscus I have seminal hibiscus back here. I have a bunch of different varieties of hibiscus. Can you see those gorgeous, gorgeous pink flowers, how tall they are? And that's the thing, a lot of the big butterflies like to get their nectar up high. They don't wanna have to come down lower because that makes them more exposed to predators. So by having flowers that are gonna get like up there for them, they get happy about that. So when it comes to these hibiscus, this is where I get a lot of medium, large butterflies. So this is where I'm gonna get my giant swallowtails, cloudless sulfurs, which are those big yellow butterflies that go really fast and they're very hard to catch on film, but they are there. You can see them. They love flying up above these flowers and coming and getting nectar. Sometimes I'll get monarchs, but I would say mostly giant swallowtails and cloudless sulfurs or yellow dog faces, which is another yellow butterfly that's super fast. This is where they love, they love, they love these tall hibiscuses. They will come over to also, um, oh, look, there's more of it. Look at that. Love my seminal, seminal, seminal hibiscus. But one of the other plants that is a Florida friendly plant that they really enjoy is, where is it? It's over here. Now there's not a lot of flowers on it right now, but that's Exora. They have these clusters of flowers. Mine is like sad at the moment because we're just coming out of the <laughs> winter season. You can see a little bit of the yellow flowers back in there, but that's one of the ones that's Florida friendly. They really enjoy it. They're gonna hang out here a lot. One of the ones that's edible that they enjoy, and I just got some footage this morning, which I'll cut in here, is these blossoms. So this is an orange tree. This is orange blossoms. May I tell you, it smells gorgeous. If you've ever smelled gardenia, same scent. Or if you've had jasmine, same scent. It's so pretty. They love this. Bees love it. Butterflies love it. Everybody loves this. And now here's where we start getting into what is the difference that caused the change for my neighbor's yard, right? Because he has all those gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. And the real big difference is host plants. Host plants will bring, like you have the flowers because you're gonna feed the adult butterflies, but if you don't have host plants, you are not gonna get butterflies to stay. You will not get the quantity of butterflies in your yard because they want to be near where they can put their little babies. It's just true, this is the reality. And they're gonna spend a lot of time there as babies and they're gonna know that that's, because like host plant, what is it? right? It's the food for the babies. So if you're not providing food for their entire life cycle, they're just not going to hang out as much. So host plant number one, citrus. Citrus. If you live in Florida, the Gulf Coast, any of the zone, eight, nine, 10, 11, citrus. This is the host plant for the giant swallowtail. They are gorgeous, gorgeous. And actually over here, I have some calamondins. And what I did earlier this year, if you look at, there's a video um, where I planted an orchard a small orchard back here. And part of the reason I placed these two colomondins, and that's a type of citrus that comes out of the Philippines, is because I knew my giant swallowtails, they come through here. And that's one of your tips. Pay attention. If you already have butterflies that come through your yard, pay attention to where they go, because that can be why a plant may or may not be attracting it. They don't wanna go where they don't wanna go. So when you put stuff where they're already traveling, increases the odds that you're gonna get one, two more. So giant swallowtails love coming through this corridor in my yard. I knew that. So I put citrus, right? And now what do I get? These little poop monsters. You may be wondering like, what in the world? Why are you showing me poop? These little poop monsters, these are giant swallowtail caterpillars hanging out on our citrus. And the reason is we put them in the path that the giant swallowtail was already going. If we put it in a different place, would they eventually find it? Yes. Yes, they'll find it eventually, most likely, but you increase your odds when you pay attention to where they're already going. 
they want to come this way. So I'm going to go and put it in their direction. And that leads me to my next thing. So you also have to understand a little bit about butterflies and the plants that they like. Giant swallowtails are not big on hanging out in fields, right? They like to go in the semi-shade area. So my giant swallowtail, he does not, she doesn't. They don't come out in this big open space here. Mm -mm -mm. They like to come right along where there's a semi-shade area, right? They will fly all along here. Rarely do I see them go up and over the roof. Now, when it comes to cloudless sulfurs, my yellows, they'll go up and over the house all day long. Monarchs will go up and over the house. They'll go through what's like a field, but the giant swallowtails won't. The zebra longwings won't. They love to be in these semi-shade areas. They'll come out in the sun, but they like to kind of go back and forth. And you can kind of think like, they have a lot of black on them and that makes a lot of sense because that's going to hide them even better for predators so that's where my next idea came when i did this next butterfly garden hi lizard and that's a shade butterfly garden i wanted to get zebra long wings and when it came to zebra long wings they like to put their eggs on passion vine that's in the shade so i had passion vine on the other side of the house that was pulling in there's lots of different butterflies that can pull in but what it does pull in is gulf fritillaries and they were on the passion vine all over that one like i think i got like 100 caterpillars at one point but the zebra long wings a little bit i was getting a little but they like the shade and this is where shade butterfly gardens come in right you can get different butterflies because you plant plants in the shade so this is a semi-shade area and we've planted two different types of passion vine one i have this native white passion vine and what's been really interesting the zebra long wings love it also, this plant really likes to hang out in the shade because it like keeps growing towards the wall. You can't even see it very well because it literally, I planted it in the middle and it's like, nope, <laughs> let me stay as much away from the sun. I've had to keep pulling it back. But we had, let me think, I'll see if I can cut in some footage right here. We had over 13 caterpillars on it the other day. And now we've had more and more zebra long wings in this yard because we put their host plant in here. And you might notice a little buddy right here kind of crawling along the wall. Who's this? This is a Gulf fritillary caterpillar. And they haven't been on this white passion vine. Actually, they've been preferring the corky stem passion vine, which is down here. And you can see it is eaten to goodness bits. But if we come down here and look, look at this. Here we go. Here we go. Look at that. Can you see those? Those little guys, right? So they are actually, and this plant is more in the sun than our other one. So it attracted our Gulf fritillaries and they actually came down in between these two trellises so that they could get to this plant, which is a thing I've noticed over here. Let me just take you back this way really quick. I'm going to show you something. So I have this variegated shufflera, which is like a super standard plant that's in a lot of people's yard. And what also is really standard is the fact that people get this. You will get this kind of vine and this is quirky stem passion vine. This is also the host plant. That's that same plant that I put in my shade garden. It is growing through this. And this has been great for getting Gulf fritillaries. The Gulf fritillaries love landing on this. They lay their little eggs. Their baby caterpillars are going down into the plant. They come up a little bit, but then they go back down, which gives them a lot of shelter from predators. So be really careful about pulling weeds because sometimes you get something like that and you wouldn't even know that you're creating a wonderful, wonderful habitat for caterpillars if you went and took this out. And what's also really neat, and this is why it's a big deal that I put lots of trellises, I put trellises in more for us than I did for wildlife, but I have now seen the huge benefit of it. So over here, back in our shade garden, we had those zebra long wings. And here's the thing, they loved a chrysalis on here. So this is one that's already closed. We had a bunch of them. They also like to go up on the wall. I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually a chrysalis that was up here. I literally minutes ago, Notice that we had a Gulf fritillary closing right here. Again, trellis plants. They like having hard structures. But can I show you something crazy? I'm going to show you something crazy. So I had seen something when I was shooting one of my videos last year. And I was like, no, no, really? No. So I have this monarch milkweed garden right here. Also grow milkweed because monarchs. But what was interesting is I'm going on a long ramble and I'm kind of taking us off track of what I was going to talk about at this point, but like, let's just keep going, right? Okay, so milkweed, it's another great host plant. If you want monarchs, get yourself milkweed. There's lots of great milkweeds. We have swamp milkweed, butterfly weed, and aquatic milkweed. We have the aquatic milkweed in the shade garden because it does well in semi-shade. 
we have our swamp and our butterfly weed, which look like sticks right now because that's what monarchs do. But what I noticed last year was that right across from it is bananas. And what we know about bananas is if you cut some of these leaves off, water trickles out, but not just any kind of water, but sugary water, which one of the things that a lot of people recommend is having like sugary like fruits or sugar water for butterflies and like hummingbirds. I don't do any of that, but here's what they did. They went and put their chrysalises up here, which means they've put themselves in a better spot. One, to get back to the milkweed. Two, to get to flowers that they like. But three, in a pinch, if this thing is dripping water out, they got it. So there's one chrysalis right here, and there's another one hiding right here. And they literally just went to chrysalis yesterday. I was so excited. I showed my neighbor. I was like, come over here. Come see what I did. Come see what is happening. It's very exciting. And I think that brings me to my next tip is that, you know, I think so many people think about food garden here, butterfly garden over here. And honestly, you've heard me talk about this in my food garden videos, whether it's the victory garden or vegetable gardening, it's about having this intermix. You know, you want a clear space of like food for us, food for them, but having them together does create all these benefits. So like, yes, the banana, yes, I have, you know, my pollinators coming in here right next to my vegetable garden. But another thing that I've been noticing that the caterpillars have been enjoying is back over here in the shade garden, because this shade garden is right across from my mulberry trees, which have been splattering little mulberries on the crowd, which means when it comes to having like an alternative sugary source, one, we want them eating their leaves. That's what they want to do. But having things that mimic nature all the time in a much more controlled fashion are the most beneficial for you and me and the wildlife out there. So what's really cool is that they've been coming over here and they've been finding some of the berries that I have not gotten in a time. They're eating their, they're eating all their leaves, but they come over here, which is also telling me they are going to be looking for places to go in chrysalis over here. And they've got some good opportunity because we've got a chain link fence over here. So don't think you have to have expensive things, even with a chain link fence, or I think a tornado cyclone fence, you are creating places for them to go and put their chrysalises that they're going to really, really enjoy. And you may be thinking, do I have to invest every year in all these plants, right? Like, am I having to buy flowers? But if you look at a lot of my garden, when it comes to butterfly gardening, a lot of the plants that are supporting butterflies are here all year round. And I'm not buying new ones. So the firebush year round, those cleodendrons year round, the dune sunflower year round. You know, so a lot of these plants are perennials. And one of the great ones besides the citrus one is these cassias. Cassias are the host plant to those big yellow butterflies. So what you can see I'm doing is all throughout the garden, I have different places where I'm putting host plants, where I'm putting different nectar sources. We've got fruit because we need the fruit, but it's also available. We've got structures for them, but we're creating lots of host plants. So we have two native types of cassias. I think it's cassia floridana and cassia bohemia. Um, and then this is a Cassia fasul, not native to Florida, because I was looking for a tree that kind of went more up than our native Cassias. Uh, but it creates shade for my house, which is a huge benefit. That was the primary reason. When it eventually produces flowers, which are gonna be gorgeous, I'm so excited for when that happens. But also we're creating another food source for a different type of butterfly. And here's another tip. Look, I'm spacing out my host plants, right? So I've got my monarchs on this side of the garden. I've got places for my Gulf fritillaries and giant and uh, long wings on either side of the house. I've got places for my giant swallowtails in the back of the house. I've got places for the the yellow, my yellow butterflies up high. So I'm spreading them out a little bit because anyone who thinks butterflies are nice, those little guys, they like to beat up on each other and like push each other out. So yeah. And here's another one. We can also go really low. And here's frog fruit. Frog fruit, this is for our little guys. And this comes up to another tip. like. If you gotta watch out using pesticides and herbicides because you can be killing host plants that you may not even realize. Frog fruit is in so many people's gardens and it's a host plant to three different butterflies. One of them is the, what is it? The common buckeye, which is a really cool looking butterfly. Um, then we also have, I think it's the scion crescent and then the white peacock, which is a really cute butterfly. It's really big. So, but we wouldn't get any of them if I didn't have the host plant available. And the thing is, is that you might be thinking, wait a minute, if everybody has this in their yard, why don't I see caterpillars? That has to do with pesticides. That's the pesticides, the herbicides. Those are probably killing off your caterpillars so they're never becoming butterflies. So you can have a host plant, but if you're putting those kind of chemicals in your yard, it won't matter. So mine actually have some activity. We're gonna leave them alone, let the little babies grow up. 
but there are some other ones. There was one I just discovered recently because I actually had a red admiral butterfly come into my yard and I was like, why is that here? So whenever I see a new butterfly, I go into big time research mode because I'm like, why, why is it here? Where did it come from? What is its host plant? Let me get more. Because if you have, like I said, if it's already coming to your garden, get more. And here is its host plant right down here. And I bet you've seen this weed before. And I will totally bu butcher the name. Actually, let me go get my notebook because I will totally butcher the name. The name of it is Appellatory or Periataria Floridana. This is part of the thistle family. I know there's some clovers mixed in, so it might get confusing, but I'm sure if you go take a look in your garden, you will see this exact plant in your yard. So it goes back to the same thing like frog fruit. If you're not paying attention to what butterflies are coming to your yard, you're gonna totally miss out on some fun things like this. Now, am I telling you, you can never, ever, ever use a pesticide? No, sometimes we need to. There's gonna be a plant that we just cannot get out. But as much as we can, the more that we limit what we're using in our garden, the more that we give opportunities for new butterflies to make their way in and find their host plant. So very exciting stuff. I'm super excited about that one. And it's that paying attention and observing your garden as much as you can. I mean, obviously like people have jobs and things to do. Like I don't expect you to stand all day in your yard, but what you're gonna find is like, when you see that butterfly, like there's another one that I'm working on right now is there's a spice bush swallowtails that come through my garden and my neighbor's garden, but neither of us had the host plant for that. Cause I go on looking. So I've been trying to figure out, okay, someone has in the area, I'm gonna go get some. I'm gonna go get some spice bush, some native spice bush, so that I can add the, the, to the population of spice bush swallowtails in the area. So another thing that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to gardens, but like they like it. So I'm just gonna tell you, like this is, this, we're just gonna see what they do. They like it. So if we look down here, boom. What's this monarch doing? This monarch caterpillar, he's hanging out on a twig, a dead twig, which most of us would have taken out of our yard by this point because it's not cute looking but dead wood, <laughs> they like them. So why are you gonna be mad about that? So consider how are you gonna create places for them to hang out? They enjoy going and sitting in the sun sometimes, but they want a little bit of protection. So dead twigs can be things that you wanna leave in the area. This is just the milkweed that died back last year. It grew back new ones and now we got new caterpillars on it, but they're still hanging out. So we can see even in the full life cycle of the plant, we're still creating opportunities for the caterpillars and the butterflies to have great places to live and hang out and continue to promote more and more. Now, y'all know, cause I've talked about this before. This is one of my, this is another tip. This is one of my favorite combos that I realized last year, which was the milkweed, which is very tall and leggy and doesn't create a lot of protection for these guys, but mixing it with a different host plant. Remember that little Cassius blue? Well, the reason we have so many in our yard is cause of our native porter weed. This is a host plant to the Cassius blue. It is super cute and I will tell you when it comes to flowers that attract the butterflies, they love these. They love these. Also some really cute native sweat bees, which if you've ever seen them, they are like little jewels flying around green and blue. I mean, I know we're here to talk about butterflies, but if you want some really pretty bees, yeah, this native porta weed brings them in. Oh, and don't mind my giant ironweed. This is going to get really, really big soon and I know once these guys close out of their chrysalises, they love that. They love that. If I ever find one that's just come out and its wings are drying, I put them over on the giant ironweeds and they love hanging out there because great nectar sources. Also awesome native plant, really cute, different. Not gonna be like the thing that you're gonna see in your neighbor's yard. So I know we've talked a lot about different flowers and native plants, but one of the things that also can be really great in your edible garden that I keep noticing that the butterflies love to do, when it's come to sweet potato leaves or squash leaves or tomato leaves, they love us to hang out on big, broad green leaves. I don't know why, but they do. They will hang out on these big old chunky leaves back here and back here. And they just, they hang out, even though there's no flowers in this, well, there's flowers now, but even when there weren't flowers, especially like the sweet potato area, when we had all those sweet potatoes back where the raised, bed, raised garden bed was, they like, especially Gulf fritillaries, Gulf fritillaries the most seem to like, find a big old leaf and just hang out. So that's just a thing. I don't know what to tell you about it, but it's just a thing I see that they do all the time. So find some places to have some big leaves, or just like I said, when you mix the vegetable garden with your wildflowers and your native butterfly gardening, man, that just, it's like a win-win situation. They really enjoy it. Another thing that the butterflies need and want, we've talked about this before, and it has to do with the fact that they need water. Now here in Florida, that is like 
like a really tricky situation to be in because you know mosquitoes so having any sort of dish that has any sort of depth you're just like asking for problems but one of the things that actually the previous owners of this house left behind and i am so glad that they did is this little frog guy and what is so great about it is it only like it's so shallow so the sprinklers run or there's a little bit of rain and that thing fills up and then like you can see it was full this morning and now it's like almost gone because of evaporation which will help me prevent having any mosquitoes but allows them to have some water or birds or whoever needs it the lizards like they're doing their thing it's there for everybody but it's a nice little thing to have in my little wildflower garden it's just super cute and it's cute like it just i feel like it brings it all together right here at the end so consider how are you going to bring water sources in that aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg because I know a lot of times when people talk about it they start talking about like whole water features like we're going to spend a thousand dollars but it really can be just that simple a small dish as a place for them to do what's called puddling this is how they get their minerals at, like that's it that's how they get their vitamins and minerals basically they're eating a lot of fiber and roughage from these greening leaves that they eat but they really don't get any minerals other than through puddling so getting a little dish like this is a really good idea keep the mosquitoes out I'm not anti-mosquito I'm just saying like we got enough. I don't need more. I hope that has you super inspired to create your butterfly friendly garden. And if you want to learn way more about butterfly gardening, there's an entire series that I've built on how to's, tips and tricks, plants, lots of good things. Um, shade garden advice, go right here. And if you want to learn more about that wildflower garden that I put in right there, go and check out this. Okay. I'll see you soon. Bye.